everywhere I go with you, people love you. He goes, yeah, they're, because the ones that remember me, that forgot me already, they're, uh, they're so old, you know. My, I go, no, no, you're mistaken. <laughs> Fernando Valenzuela capped his remarkable 1981 season by winning both the Cy Young and Rookie of the Year awards, the only player in Major League history to earn both in the same year. He would continue to pitch for the Dodgers until 1990, winning 141 games along the way. But after a few so-so seasons, the Dodgers cut Valenzuela in the spring of 91. They got what they needed out of Fernando, and I think Fernando got enough of what he needed from the Dodgers. It was a give and take thing uh, uh, when he was with the Dodgers. They did plenty of things for Fernando. I think they, they overused him, but uh, he, he could have said no. He, he wasn't thinking of, of money at all. He just loves the sport. He never, ever talked about, I want to make this, I'm going to make that. Just went out there and played baseball. When the Dodgers released Fernando Valenzuela, it was just like the dream had ended. When he was gone, it was a big void, you know, big void, uh, you know, to go see the Dodgers and being a fan. The Dodgers made their decision after showcasing the pitcher in a spring exhibition start in Monterrey, Mexico, against fellow countryman Teddy Higuera and the Milwaukee Brewers. Shortly after the game ended, they released Fernando. And he said, hey, why didn't you release me before this game against Teddy? Business. We were all heartbroken because we had, we had lived through all the good times with Fernando, you know, he had brought uh, honor. He had brought, you know, so much to, to the Mexican community. You know, he was a genuine hero. So when uh, he left, and it wasn't in the best terms. Remember, it was not in the best terms. He won't badmouth the Dodgers. No, 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 no. He, uh, he owes them a lot. You know, I think it's, they owe each other. It's a, it's a marriage. And uh, so he, um, us, on the other hand, we're, we're pretty upset. So, you know, we're saying, you know, why didn't they release you before? And hey, you know, that's, that's just the way it goes. And the Mexican American community took that personally. Um, again, they said, well, that's just like uh, what, you know, typically how they treat Mexicans. They'll use us and for our labor, but once we're not effective, they'll just throw us away. Kicked him to the curb, but he, you know, he, he bounced around other teams. It was, it was never the same, you know, it's never the same. Valenzuela continued to pitch in the big leagues until 1997 with the Angels, the Orioles, Phillies, Padres, and Cardinals. The Fernando mania energy kind of stuck around. Even when he kind of sunk into mediocrity, he never stopped being Fernando. He was always the guy with the, from the exotic, strange place with the weird pitch and the weird look, and he was always Fernando. Watching, I think, your heroes get old is always really, really hard. Watching them lose the thing that they're, they're, they're really extraordinary at, you, you have to transition. Transitions are a big part of, of our culture, right? So I think we get that. We get the, the, the notion that everything changes. You grieve the sense that people get older and they shift and change and their bodies change. It, it, it's a tragedy and it's also kind of like a beautiful reality of life. But as Mexicans, we are deeply connected to the notion of, of change because that's what our entire lives are built on, change and death, right? We commune with the dead. Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. I mean, we have a, a, a never ending relationship with the notion that you change, you change, you change. After stints pitching in the Mexican Winter League, Valenzuela retired for good in 2006 at age 49. But he's never really left baseball. Fernando's been a member of the Dodger Spanish language broadcast team since 2003. And he owns a Mexican baseball team, Tigres de Quintana Roo. Big difference to be a player, regular player, and, uh, and own one team because uh, just, uh, you know, he has to think in uh, different, different things. It's fun because it's, I'm still in baseball and I think that's, that's what I like to, um, to be, you know, in, uh, in a baseball field. It's been 40 years, but Valenzuela remains frozen in our collective memory as a pudgy 20-year-old pitcher from Echoaquila, Mexico, who beguiled batters and brought a sense of pride and inclusion to LA's Latino community. There's a reason why they called it Fernando Mania. Uh, you know, my all-time favorite uh, pitcher is uh, Sandy Koufax, in no small part because I grew up in a Jewish community and my mother was so proud when he refused uh, to play on the Sabbath, you know, out of 
this strong sense of faith. And of course, he was also a sensation over a long period of time. There's no question that fairly quickly, uh, Fernando became my other favorite uh, Dodger. The, the pride that, that, that we all felt uh, growing up on the East Side and seeing someone like us playing baseball at a really high level. The fact that, you know, he's a baseball player, that he's a Dodger, that he is successful, that we could point with pride that we have one of our own in this kind of amazing role. Those are very, very significant images to the Latino community because there's not enough of them. And he was humble and he was one of them. So it brought it all together and it just made us proud. And like I said, it was like having someone from the family be in that kind of position. There was a, a real closeness from our community. So many people have not met Fernando. They, they've only had an opportunity to see him in the stadium or, or on TV, but they feel like he's part of their family and they're very proud of that. I have a, a, a moment in my family where it was my father, my uncle, and it was my cousins. It was all men. And we were watching, uh, we were at a Dodger game and Fernando comes out and I remember looking at uh, my father. My father was teary eyed <laughs> and it meant so much, right? And I think it was, Fernando was a symbol of the thing that brought my family together. I, it's almost like silly now when I think about it, but uh, I think it was a really big moment to see all of that, uh, all far come together over something we could for once agree on. The bleachers that used to be mostly uh, white, um, mostly uh, fraternities and things like that uh, uh, became more and more brown. And so did the upper deck. I remember when I first started up there, it was basically white. There's just a bunch of dudes with serapes up in the upper decks. And then eventually people began to get into the reserve section that were brown? First of all, Los Angeles is, as we do, like we have stars. I don't think at the time when Fernando was, was, was pitching, I don't think there was a bigger star. I don't think there's been one. Fernando, when he came aboard, he was the guy. Fernando brought neighborhoods together. And Fernando Mania lives on in the broadcast booth, where Valenzuela calls Dodgers games with fellow legend Jaime Harin. I was very fortunate to be with the Dodgers when he came in 1980, and I went there to greet him. But I noticed that now, a little bit, he's more open now. Before, he was very quiet, didn't talk much. But now he, he is more relaxed, more open. Well, he has been with us for so many years, so I think he feels very comfortable with us. As long as Fernando's in that booth calling the Spanish language games, we are still writing a good part of the Fernando Mania wave. Fernando made change baseball. I mean, Jackie Robinson changed baseball, but he, he changed it in terms of racially. But Fernando changed it not only in terms of racially or ethnically, but culturally in terms of language. He connected Mexico. Fernando made baseball an international, an international sport. I mean, at least in the Spanish speaking world. I believe that Fernando will always be a hero to the Mexican American community. People love him. To this day, they love him. You root for the underdog. And so when Fernando came in, it's like, I think it was in our DNA. He's an underdog, you know, cause he's coming from Sonora, he's coming from the Mexican League, but we're gonna root for him because we wanna see this guy be successful. We want him to achieve his goals. We need somebody that we can tell a kid that's got the goods, look at what this guy did. And you kind of mentor him through those programs and you point them towards these guys that came from nothing and achieved so much. And look at, we're still talking about him today. It's, it's still alive. The pride is still there. The Fernando jerseys are still there. The veteranos and the veteranas hanging on are still there. Oh my God, so the feeling now about Fernando is Fernando is the uncle that made good, right? He is the relative who is still forever a superstar. He's immortalized. You know, he's the Maria Felix of sports. I tell him, you know, uh, it's unbelievable that after all this, people, everywhere I go with you, people love you. People are still after you. And, and, and look at Fernando everywhere we're at. And to him, it's just, mm, 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 oh well. He goes, yeah, they're, because the ones that remember me, that forgot me already, they're, uh, they're so old, you know. I'm, I'm, I go, nope, nope, you're mistaken. Everywhere you go, people respect you. 
after 40 years, the people still remember the things and games. And even when I go in Mexico, the people, they still talking about few games. Like I say, I don't even remember those games, but they, they, they say, okay, in this day you do this and that, and that's great. You know, when after many years, some fans, people are still talking about, the, about those years. You know? It's an L.A. story. I honestly believe that it's part of the history of Los Angeles. That's the impact that he had, not just on the Latino community. And I think every ethnic group was, was wearing Fernando Jersey, you know, everybody, because he was the guy.